Hey guys, it's April the 12th, 2024, and it is a super windy day out there today. Um, I tried to go out there and film today, and the wind just kept blowing, blowing, blowing. I mean, it is bad. So, <clears throat> I decided to come inside and do today's video, uh, you know, just for uh, the, the sound's sake. Um, I didn't want the audio to be just, you know, a bunch of wind blowing across the microphone and making it just basically uh, impossible to hear. So, anyway, I'm inside today and <clears throat> you'll probably notice uh, I've got my fireplace going, but the wind's blowing so hard right now that it's actually blowing this around. It's blowing down the chimney. Um, so I'm going to do this in here today, but what we're going to talk about today is the link between gout and, uh, AUD or alcohol consumption or, you know, however you want to, uh, say it, but, um, you know, there's, there's more to gout than just alcohol consumption, but, um, alcohol consumption plays a huge role in gout. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, I want to go ahead and start off by saying that, uh, that, gout was the first thing that happened to me um, when I should have known that something was wrong. Um, it was the first time that I'd ever get gotten like sick, um, had like a real uh, consequence from drinking too much. Um, I had, uh, I, I thought that I'd hurt my foot and this, it wasn't the first time that this had happened. Um, actually, the first time I ever got gout, I actually got it in my elbow. Um, and I've talked about this before, but I used to do a lot of whitewater kayaking. Um, and I thought that what I had ended up doing is that I, I, I thought I hit my elbow and got bursitis uh, in my elbow, which I was terribly wrong. Once again, one of those things where, you know, you go online and uh, you, know, you think you're going to figure out what's going on with you. Uh, by looking at WebMD or something like that, and that's what I did. Um, and I've talked about that before too, you know, it's just not a good idea to go on the internet and try to self-diagnose yourself because, uh, you know, you could be completely wrong. Um, and I was. Uh, like I said, I thought it was bursitis, I let it go, it finally went away, and it actually took a couple months for uh, the inflammation in my elbow to go down. And my elbow had gotten so swollen um, I look, my elbow looked like Popeye's elbow. Um, it was like poking out like, like, like that far. I had this huge whelp on the back of my elbow and just touching it, um, was so painful. If a bed sheet touched my elbow, it, I would like jump up out of the bed. Um, I would have to keep my elbow elevated on top of a pillow, um, at nighttime just to get sleep. Um, it was it, it was completely horrible, and um, I ended up getting it again in my foot. And you know, I used to, was a chef for a long period of time, and you know, being in a kitchen, standing on your feet all day long, you know, I thought that maybe I'd hurt my foot. Um, Any time that we got, and I used to get new kitchen equipment all the time. And in order to save money, I would always take the stuff in myself. And we're talking about thousands of pounds of uh, equipment, you know, like a range in a kitchen. I don't know how much they weigh, but they're a couple thousand pounds. And I would get my guys. And uh, the place that I worked at was an old, it was an old mansion. And it wasn't really set up to be a kitchen. And we would have to take the stuff up these big flights of stairs. So I thought that, that you know, that's what I had done to myself. I'd hurt myself. Um, but what ended up happening, I ended up getting it again in my foot. And this time I really thought that I had broken my foot. So I went to the doctor and uh, when I went in there, I told the doctor, I think I've broken my foot. And my foot was all swollen. I couldn't even get my shoe on anymore at that point in time. Uh, like I said, at nighttime, if the bed sheets touched my toe, um, and it was in my big toe, it was like right where, like if this is my foot, it was like, this would be your big toe. It was like right in the big toe, like right here, um, like on the top of the foot, the side of the foot. It was really swollen on the side of the foot. And uh, like I said, I thought that I had broken my foot. So when I went to the doctor, I told him what was going on. He did an x-ray, came back in the room and said, there's nothing wrong with your foot. Your foot's completely fine. Um, he said that we're going to go ahead and do a blood test real quick and, and, and look at something. I had no idea. I didn't even know what gout was in the period, that period of time. Um, and then the doctor proceeded to come in the room and he said, hey, uh, your uric acid levels are really elevated and um, you have gout. 
and I was, I didn't even know what God was. He had to explain it to me, and uh, they put me on steroid medication, and the uh, gout went away. Um, it took about a week, um, and with taking the steroid medication, the gout subsided and went away. And uh, that same doctor's appointment, the doctor said to me, hey, I really think, because he was like, diabetes and gout are linked together a lot of times. He said, so I want you to come back in here and do a fasting glucose uh, test and let's take a look at your blood sugar and just see if you might have diabetes or not. Well, I never went back. And that was years ago. And if I had gone back to the doctor and had my fasting glucose uh, checked, uh, they probably would have determined that I had diabetes and who knows if I would have been here uh, where I'm at now. Um, you know, and one of the reasons I didn't want to do any further looking into it was one, I was afraid. Um, and two, I didn't want them to tell me that I had to stop drinking. And of course, when the doctor talked to me, uh, he asked me about my alcohol consumption, and of course I lied to him and told him that I don't drink that much. When I was drinking vodka every single day at that period, um, but, and, and he told me too, he goes, yeah, I drink too, but, you know, he got to talking about how much he drinks, which, you know, wasn't that much, and I'm, you know, agreeing with him, you know, oh, I have a glass every night or something. Uh, you know, not telling him the truth that I was drinking multiple glasses of, uh, of liquor every single night and beer um, but like I said if I had actually looked had it looked into further um, you know they could have addressed the actual real problem that was underlying um, underlying that and you know it just wasn't the fact that my uric acid levels were elevated there was a whole lot more to it which I'm going to go into today because um, gout's one of those things uh, you know there's really two reasons why that you end up with gout um, and one of them is uh, excessive alcohol consumption, and another one is uh, sugar. Um, and, and diet as well can play a role in it. But the two big factors are uh, consumption of fructose and consumption of alcohol. Um, and like I said, we're going to get into that and why uh, alcohol causes those problems and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and hop right into it today. Um, so gout, what is gout? Well, gout is often referred to as the king's disease. And the reason being is because back in the day, uh, the people that would end up getting gout would be, uh, you know, royalty and things like that because, um, you know, sugar, uh, alcohol, um, you know, the rather are expensive. And the people that could afford to drink large quantities of alcohol and eat lots of sugar were, you know, kings and people that were in royalty, people that were very wealthy. Um, wealthy people are the ones that ended up with gout. But now these days, you know, sugar is dirt cheap. And, uh, you know, the, especially here in the United States, uh, we consume a lot of sugar and a lot of alcohol as well. And those two factors play a huge role in gout. And there are a lot of people in the United States who have gout now. Um, so what, what, you know, what exactly is gout? Well, gout is uh, you know, elevated uh, uric acid levels in your body. And when your kidneys can't deplete the uric acid out of your body, um, what ends up happening is the gout uh, will settle in places in your body. Um, and it's usually in the colder parts of your body or the, the extremities of your body. So your hands, your feet, uh, your knees, um, and you can basically get gout in any one of your joints. Uh, you can end up, you can actually get gout in your spine. Um, but the places that people usually end up getting gout, like I said, are in the hands and in the feet, um, especially in the big toe. Uh, it's places where things tend to settle, and uh, what ends up happening is the the uric acid crystallizes in the joints. And when you get gout, uh, you will know. Um, the one thing about gout is, is it is very, very, very painful. Um, any of you guys who have ever suffered from gout before know exactly what I'm talking about. It is very painful and it's, it's one of those things that you pray that it will go away. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, if you get it in your feet, it's, you can't walk. 
Um, I've had gout so bad, I had to put a boot on to get around. Uh, I couldn't get my shoes on. Um, just standing up on that foot, uh, it, it's, it's unbearable. I mean, it's just, it's so painful. And what ends up happening too is the joint will end up getting, uh, really swollen, red. And, uh, you know, if you, if you get it in your hands, if you look up some images online of gout, um, look at images of people who have it in their hands, they'll get it in their knuckles, uh, and their knuckles will swell up like that big. Um, look at people who have it in their feet, um, their feet around the toes will swell up really big, get really red and inflamed. I'm telling you, it is horrible. It is something you do not want to have to deal with if you've never had gout before. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the uric acid is a, me a metabolic byproduct of fructose and alcohol. Um, the liver converts it into uric acid um, and that and what ends up happening is is alcohol when when you drink a lot of alcohol um, the alcohol prevents our kidneys from depleting the uric acid out of our body uh, the alcohol can actually like uh, it can like stunt our kidneys from functioning properly and that uric acid will sit in our body and can't get depleted out um, especially because one, uh, you know, the, the alcohol is, 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 is preventing our kidneys from depleting it. Anyway, like I was saying, um, you know, the thing with alcohol is, is that, uh, it, it can cause a couple of problems in our body. Um, you know, for one, uh, you know, alcohol is already high in sugar already in itself. Um, another thing too, is that when you're drinking, we get dehydrated. Um, you know, so we're depleting the water out of our body, uh, which will increase um, the uric acid levels in our body and make them more concentrated. Um, and it also prevents our kidneys from depleting the uric acid out of our body. So alcohol can create a triple whammy on top of us. So if, if, if you're drinking, uh, you know, that already causes a lot of problems. And then on top of it, if you're eating a lot of excess sugar daily, um, which we're in America, we're only supposed to have 25 grams of sugar, excess sugar a day. Um, if I understand the American diet, we eat about five times the amount of uh, a lot of sugar we're allowed to have daily. Um, <clears throat> and then on top of it as well, uh, like I said, the, the, um, if you're eating foods that are high in purines, uh, the foods that, can, that will cause your uric acid levels to increase in your body, um, if you're doing all three of those, eating, uh, eating sugar, drinking alcohol, and eating the foods that are high in purines, um, you're, you, you've got a lot of, um, of stuff going on there that's probably going to end up causing you gout. And I'm telling you, it is something that you do not want to have. Um, gout causes a lot of problems, and it is very, very, very painful. Um, if you get gout, uh, you're going to know it. Um, like I said, the bed sheet, if it touched my toe, um, it, it would drive me up the wall. Uh, I, I couldn't even walk around. I had to wear a boot to walk around in um, because it had gotten so bad. And if you get gout, plan on missing some work because I'm telling you, uh, it takes a while for it to go away. Um, they got to put you on steroids to get it to go down. Um, now, there are some medications that they can put you on uh, to keep the uric acid level down in your body. Um, but one of the problems with uh, those drugs that they can give you is they can cause, uh, you know, some serious side effects. Um, and some side effects that you just don't want to deal with. Um, it can cause impotence in men. Um, it's just, and once you get on it, you got to stay on it. It's just it's something that you want, don't want to do. Um, so, uh, either decreasing the amount of alcohol you're drinking or getting rid of it, period, which I would suggest just getting rid of alcohol, um, you know, and uh, not eating so much sugar every single day, 25 grams or less, uh, drinking a lot of water, and um, <clears throat> not eating a lot of those foods that are high in purines can really help you out and not, you know, make it where you don't have to go to the doctor as much, dealing with this kind of stuff. Um, it says here that uh, fructose causes seven times the amount of oxidative stress on the body, uh, which is just crazy.
Um, <clears throat> fructose inhibits nitrous oxide production, which leads to high blood pressure. So people who have gout often have high blood pressure and vice versa. Uh, people with high blood pressure often have gout as well. Um, so back to the video from yesterday, talking about high blood pressure as well. And fructose metaboli uh, uh, being metabolized in the liver, um, if there's too much fructose in the body, then that gets converted into uh, fat, which gets stored in the liver, which can cause fatty liver as well. Um, it, it definitely don't want to go down that road, <clears throat> especially if you're having liver problems already as it is. Um, you know, you, you got all this excess energy and your liver doesn't know what to do with it, so it creates fat, and that fat gets stored in your liver, so you're adding, you know, <clears throat> fuel to the fire when that happens. <clears throat> uh, Pre-diabetes and di diabetes come from this as well, uh, from the excess sugar um, uh, consumption. So, uh... Like, like I said, uric acid levels above 5.5 um, indicate there's a mitochondrial dysfunction and this insulin resistance, which let them know that, that you have gout. Um, high fasting glucose levels and high triglycerides as well uh, will let them know that, that there might be an issue. So what are some things that, uh, you know, that you can do in order to help uh, with gout? Well, one is cherries, and one of the things that I've used in the past, uh, I did a bunch of research into it, um, is, is tart cherry juice um, or either tart cherry pills. Um, and they make the little supplements, just I guess the juice, they've dried up and then they uh, turn it into a powder. Um, but they make, make little supplements of tart cherry. Um, and I, I have taken that before and it's actually helped. Um, it helps get rid of the uric acid in your body. Um, switching over to low-fat dairy if you do consume dairy instead of, uh, you know, eating the high-fat dairy products, um, um, eating healthier foods, uh, vegetables, um, and, and, and although vegetables do have a lot of oxalates in them, you know, don't go overboard with it, but, you know, consuming more vegetables, uh, especially uh, green vegetables and bright-colored vegetables, um, kale, broccoli, spinach, things like that are really good for you. Um, vitamin C, uh, vitamin K as well can help with it. Um, switching from simple grains to whole grain foods. Uh, you know, simple grains would be stuff like cereal, um, white rice, stuff like that. Switching over to like brown rice. Um, not eat, if you eat oatmeal or something like that, don't eat the quick cook oatmeal, eat the real oatmeal, the old fashioned kind. Um, drinking a lot of water. Uh, drinking the water helps to, uh, one, hydrate us, and two, um, helps to deplete the uric acid out of our body. It helps our kidneys to flush that uric acid out. So drinking lots of water is very, very important. Um, berries are really good. Uh, you know, you don't want to sit down and eat a whole pint of strawberries or something like that. But, you know, eating like a handful of blueberries, strawberries, uh, raspberries, blackberries. Berries are really good. Uh, they're very high in antioxidants, um, which can help with the uric acid levels as well. Um, <clears throat> Plant-based proteins are really good for you too. And we're going to go over, um, you know, some of the foods that do cause high uh, uric acid levels. Um, and you'll see that uh, um, meat does cause a lot of problems. Uh, you really want to keep your meat portions really small, uh, nothing bigger than your fist, um, you know, like four ounces. If you're going to have a steak, you want to eat like four ounces or less. Um, but we'll go through that in just a second. And make sure that you're getting um, eating food that are high in fiber um, are very important as well. Um, but let's go ahead and go over this list of the foods um, that you want to avoid um, if you have gout. So beer and grain liquors like vodka and whiskey, you really want to avoid those. Uh, red meat, which is lamb and pork. Uh, red meat, lamb and pork, I'm sorry. Um, organ meats, uh, you really want to stay away from those. Um, so uh, liver, kidneys, um, uh, glandular meats like the thymus or the pancreas or um, 
Uh, a lot of people refer to them as sweetbreads as well. Uh, seafood, especially shellfish, are really, really uh, bad for you if you have gout problems. Um, shrimp, lobster, mussels, anchovies, and sardines. You, you want to stay away from those. High fructose corn syrup products like soda, some juices, cereal, ice cream, candy, and fast food. You want to stay away from that. Especially fried foods, you want to stay away from those as well. Um, so what foods are best for uh, gout? Um, like I said, low-fat dairy and non-fat non, uh, non dairy products such as yogurt and skim milk. Fresh fruits and vegetables. And you really want to stay on... Um, the fruits are on the lower end of the glycemic range. Um, it, 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 a simple Google search will give you uh, those answers. Just stuff like apples and pears, blueberries, things of that nature. Uh, you really want to stay away from stuff like pineapples and grapes and stuff like that that are really high on the glycemic uh, chart. Um, nuts, peanut butter and grains, you want to stay away from those. Fat and oil. Potatoes, rice, bread, and pasta. So anything that's up there in the glycemic chart, you want to stay away from it. Um, meats like fish, chicken, and red meat are fine in moderation, but like I said, around four to six ounces per day. And that's all you want to consume of that. Um, vegetables, you may see veggies like spinach and asparagus on the high purine list, but studies uh, show they don't raise your risk of gout or gout attacks. So... Um, <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, what, what we really want to do is really want to stay away from stuff like candy, uh, uh, especially soda. You definitely want to stay away from soda. Anything that's got high fructose corn syrup in it, you really want to just, just avoid it. Avoid it like the plague. It is horrible for you uh, if you have gout. Um, this is a no-brainer right here, but of course, alcohol. And um, alcohol is one of those ones that just, it causes so many different problems. And this is just another one of them. Um, gout is directly linked to alcohol consumption. Um, there's really two things that cause gout. And uh, it's alcohol and fructose. Um, you know, there's other things that come along with it that can help amplify that. But alcohol and sugar really, really do uh, increase your risk of getting gout. And, um... You, you just want to stay away from it. Um, so fast food, you want to stay away from. Uh, anything that's deep fried, you want to stay away from. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you're eating small portions of meat. Um, you know, trying to eat more plant-based proteins such as legumes. Um, uh, you know, don't eat a lot of shellfish. Those can cause problems as well. Um, I've, I've also heard things like uh, mushrooms can uh, not be all that great for you if you have gout. Uh, uh, oysters are not good for you. Um, there's a whole list. And if you want to just Google um, foods to avoid uh, with gout or to avoid if you don't want to get gout, just a simple Google search will pull the stuff right up. I mean, there is, there are, there's a huge list of foods. Now, I just named off a few. But like I said, um, alcohol is one of those ones that is a huge contributor to gout. Uh, like I said, it, it not only it prevents our kidneys from getting rid of the uric acid, um, but it just causes a host of all of our other types of problems as well. Um, so another reason to stay away from alcohol, uh, because trust me when I tell you, you do not want to get gout. Um, I have had gout multiple times. Um, and like I said, I should have done something about it in the past. I should have um, had it looked into more. I should have had a fasting glucose test. Um, I would have found out I had diabetes years ago. Um, and I wish I had, uh, but I didn't because the addiction had me. And I didn't want to hear, you have to stop drinking. Uh, I refused to hear that. So I was not going to hear it. Uh, I just never went back. And it just shows how powerful alcohol can be, that it can prevent us from doing things that are going to be beneficial to our health because we want to keep consuming uh, the poison. And that's exactly what alcohol is, is poison. And, uh, you know, just this week, just the things I've talked about, some of the health consequences that come along with it, um, it's just ridiculous. I mean, um, you know, not to, to get off on another tangent, but, you know, the, the, just really quick. I mean, alcohol can cause gout, high blood pressure, pancreatic problems, 
liver problems, stomach problems, esophagus problems. It messes with our brain. It can mess with our eyesight. It messes with our skin. It totally messes up our GI tract. We're not getting the proper absorption of uh, vitamins and nutrients because of alcohol. Um, it just alcohol pretty much just wrecks our whole entire body. And the thing with alcohol is, is that it's water soluble, fat soluble. It gets into every single part of our body. There's not one part of our body that alcohol cannot just go right into. It can get into any cell, it can go into anything. It does not matter. And alcohol does not care. It doesn't care what our skin color is, what our, if we're male or female. It doesn't care what our financial status is. It doesn't care about anything. It can affect anybody. Any single one of us can become an alcoholic. And it's best to just stay away from it. And if you are currently drinking, it's best to just stop. Um, because the risk is not worth the reward. At the end of the day, that little bit of relaxation that you get from it is just not worth all the health consequences that come along with it. And, you know, guys, at the end of the day, you know, if you're not so concerned about your health, uh, I know that everybody's concerned about money. And, uh, you know, you can't live without money. And if you end up with a lot of health problems, um, that stuff costs money. And it's not cheap. And, it, you know, you're going to end up spending thousands and thousands of dollars <clears throat> trying to make sure that, you know, you can keep going on. And, you know, the medications and all that kind of stuff, they, they, like I said, they're not cheap. And once this, this type of stuff happens, I mean, you're going to have to get on medication. You're probably going to be on it for the rest of your life. And you don't want to end up like that. You do not want to end up in my shoes. I can promise you that. I have a bag of medication in my bedroom. And one of these days, I'm going to go over my medication. But I have a Ziploc bag full of medicine that I have to take every single day. And I hate doing it, but I have to. And uh, I just don't want to see anybody else end up like that. But with that said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end today's video. Um, you know, it's already bad enough. We've already talked about enough negative health consequences this week. I'm um, really looking forward to tomorrow. Don't forget, tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time is going to be the live video. Um, hope to see as many of you there as possible. Like I said, it's going to go on for as long as it's organically uh, possible to go on. Um, you know, if we still got a bunch of people in there and we've already gone an hour, I'll go another hour. It just all depends, but it will at least go for an hour tomorrow. Uh, last, the, the past couple lives I've done, I've gone on for two. Um, you know, if anything, too, it's an opportunity for you to just throw some headphones in and just listen while you're doing some stuff around the house. It's, we have great conversation while we're on there. Um, really hoping that uh, David's going to be there tomorrow. David, I'm looking for you. Hope you're going to be modding again. You've got the wrench. And um, I think that's it for today, guys. Really hoping to see you in tomorrow's live video at 12 o'clock. Um, so with that said, y'all have a great rest of your day today. Um, I'm actually going to be uh, camping out here on my property with my boys tonight. So um, we're about to go outside and set up our tent and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, really looking forward to hanging out with my boys this weekend. Uh, it's the last the last of their spring break is this weekend. So I'm really going to be trying to spend as much time with them as I can before they have to go back to school. So anyway, guys, like I said, y'all have a great rest of your day today, and I will see you in tomorrow's live. Bye-bye.